Hi, so this week we are reading an excerpt from Martin Buber's I Am Thou. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about um, him before you get started to kind of help you um, think through what he's writing. So Martin Buber was born in Austria in 1878. Um, he studied philosophy um, and he melded this with his Jewish background, and he's often considered a, a Jewish philosopher. Um, unlike a lot of other Jewish thinkers at the time, um, he's unique because he was studying secular issues instead of religious issues. Um, in 1933, uh, he resigned his professorship at the University of Frankfurt am Main. Um, and this was because Hitler had come to power in Germany, and he he resigned his position in protest. Um, after his resignation, he founded the Central Office for Jewish Adult Education, and this was actually a pretty important um, form of resistance, because when the Nazis were in power, they forbade um, Jewish people from getting an education. So this office was trying to, um, this group was trying to keep the people educated, like keep on providing access to education. Um, in 1938, he left Germany and Austria for Jerusalem and he settled there. Um, so the book that we're reading, or the the excerpt we'll be reading is from a book called I Am Thou, and it was published in 1923. And the core of this book is the idea that if you reduce all human speech to its most basic elements, you come up with two basic ideas. One of these basic ideas is the I-it idea. And this is when we use language for um, practical reasons. If we want to know something, if we want to make a demand of somebody, um, if we want to find something out, um, we will resort to this I-it formation. In contrast to this, he says that we also can use the I-U formation, but this is really different because the I-it, um, you are a person and you're treating the other person like an object. Um, the I-U formation, you are a person and you are treating the other person like another person. But what this means is you can't use the other person. You can only experience the other person. Um, and it's very difficult. It's almost mystical because you experience this person, you encounter this person, you're changed by this person. The barrier between you becomes a little bit blurred but you don't necessarily get anything from them. And he says that, you know, what happens is that as we travel through time, sometimes we're able to have these, this I-U moment, but most of the time we have this I-it moment. But it's actually fluid, so you, you'll go from experiencing, to using, encountering, to utilizing. And you know, it's just kind of the way that we see things. And this is really about fundamentally how do we use people, how do we, how do we know people, how do we understand people. Um, basic ideas about how we relate to one another. The part of the book that we're going to read 
gets into some of the not mo some of the less pleasant aspects of um, human characters. So the ideas of hate and what it means to hate each other. Um, but I think especially in the context of what we're talking about, it's really important to think about. Anyway, we will talk more about this next Wednesday. I am looking forward to your thoughts. I am looking forward to your papers. And we will talk soon. Okay, guys. Bye.